Hi everyone, uh, John here from theflankdie.org. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of videos uh, over the next little while on uh, some CO2 um, topics. Uh, the first couple of videos are going to be on on CO2 reactors or di diffusers. Um, one of the biggest challenges I think people have with CO2 is actually getting the CO2 into your tank. Right? CO2 is a gas. Uh, and, and, and the hardest part is to get that gas diffused into the water of your tank. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, depending on the size of your tank and the type of filter you're using. And uh, there's a whole bunch of variables that come into play, which hopefully I'll clear some of that up well, in these next couple of videos. The first uh, video that I'm going to show you is on, uh, or the, the reactor that I'm going to show you is, is basically an inline reactor, which is what you're looking at right now. Um, these type of reactors are fairly common. You can see the plans for them on the internet. Very easy to make yourself. Um, and these are meant to run in line with a canister filter. Okay, so you have to have a canister filter uh, to be able to use one of these. These, I, I would say these are the most effective and most efficient type of reactors that you can, that you can use for, for big tanks. I would say for tanks over 50 gallons you want to be using one of these uh, type of reactors just because it guarantees that you're getting 100 percent CO2 diffusion into your tank. Basically how it works if we take a look at it here your CO2 is going to run into this in this case the way I build it I build it with uh, with a um, what do you call it a check valve uh, into here so your CO2 is going to come into here uh, into here um, the output of your filter is going to connect into here okay so what happens is the output of the filter hose goes into here the water comes down this way okay pushing pushing the water down and then another hose <coughs> hooks up to here and then it goes into your into your tank <coughs> So basically, the, how this works is the water, the water forces down, the CO2 is going into here, and the bubbles by nature are going to try and rise up, okay? But the water is forcing it down. So that's the action that actually <coughs> dissolves the CO2 into the water, is the bubbles going up, the water forcing it down, okay? And then by the time, by the time it comes out to here, it's totally, totally dissolved, and then it goes into your tank. So this sits, this actually sits outside of your, <coughs> outside of your tank. It's not inside of your tank at all. Like I say, the benefit of this, there's a few benefits. A, it's very cheap. Okay, I actually, I'm starting to make these myself, and sell them for about 25 bucks. Now, you can, if you have the parts available, you can make it for about, probably about 15 or so dollars. It depends. But the biggest problem is is this piece right here. Okay, this is a two-inch uh, PVC pipe. So unless you have some of that handy, you've got to buy it in in a 15-foot uh, in a in a 15-foot or I think it's 10-foot actually a 10-foot piece, which is putting the cost of it um, a little bit high. So. If you don't have that, if you've got to go out and actually buy that piece just to make this reactor, it's actually, it's actually about, it's cheaper to just buy it from me. Um, but if you have all that stuff, and then the other hard part of it is actually going to the hardware store and finding, finding all these pieces that actually fit together, which is over the years I've I've found it a real, real, uh, real issue. But that is one of the benefits of it is it's very cost effective whether you you buy it from somebody like myself or you make it yourself. 25 bucks, guaranteed 100% uh, um, CO2 uh, diffusion into your tank. And these would work on, on huge tanks, right? So you got a 100 gallon tank, this would work great. The only downfall, it's not even really much of one, is that because of this 2 inch um, cavity, the flow rate of your, of your filter is going to be slowed a little bit which might cause you some issues because you do want to have some water flow in a planted tank. You don't want it to be totally stagnant. You don't want it to be splashing around because that totally 
um, diffuses the CO2 into the air, but by the, other, by the same token, you don't want it to be totally stagnant either. So this does slow it down a little bit. Um, you have to sort of see if it, if it makes any difference in your case. I haven't found it to be much of a problem, but you can always add, add, a, add a pump or a, another filter or something like that if it does cause you issues. Uh, but that's about the only downfall that I can I can see with this uh, with this type of reactor. I've used these for a number of years on all of my big tanks uh, ever since I saw the plans for them, um, uh, and I've, I've I've I'm starting to use a few other ones just for convenience. But if you have a canister filter, you know a Fluval or a Heme or whatever, and you've got a big tank over 50 gallons, this is your best bet. For, for CO2, there's absolutely no question about it. <coughs> so like I say, I'm, I've got these on sale uh, on my site right now for $25. Shipping would be expedited, uh, so it's not too bad, especially if you're getting other stuff. It would just be a flat rate there. Um, in terms of, the one thing you got to be careful of is these barbs here, these barbs. <coughs> I've got three, three sizes in stock half inch, five eighths and three quarter. So uh, when you check out, just make sure uh, you choose the right uh, barb size for whatever filter hoses you need or whatever filter hoses you have. And I'll send the right size along with that. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Next one I'll be uh, talking about a different reactor.